class is uh, life. And he's going to teach us. Uh, I uh, teach Spanish on a daily basis. And I, uh, uh, this semester, I've taken on a couple of classes of middle schoolers. And all I can say about middle schoolers is that anyone who teaches sixth, seventh, and eighth graders has my undying respect. Um, they are a fun group. Uh, they are a challenging group. Uh, I've taught high school students, and you know, I thought they were knuckleheads, but man, this is just you know, a whole other thing, a whole other level of knuckleheadedness, I think. Uh, you know what, I remember those, yeah, I remember when I was there, and I'm sure my teacher sat there going, oh my goodness, this kid. Um, it's interesting in a class, as a teacher, you can see kids that are motivated, and there, I've got one little girl in my Spanish class that uh, she sits on the edge of her chair, she's got her little pad of paper out, she's taking down notes, anything I write on the board, she's writing it down. Got a kid sitting right next to her, man, he is, you know, looking at the ceiling and picking at his ear, and, uh, you know, just totally uninterested in what's going on. It's amazing. Now, I, I, which one is going to learn more Spanish? Obviously, the little girl that's focused. You know, as believers, we're kind of like that too, aren't we? You can have somebody, man, they, they, they sit in a service like this, and they have the opportunity to be under God's word and to hear God's word proclaimed, and they're soaking it in, and they're trying to learn from it and grow from it, and you have somebody else that they're counting the, you know, the little spots on the ceiling up there. Um, grow. Grow. Take the time to let God work in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit change you and make you the person that he wants you to be, which takes me to the fifth thing that the Holy Spirit does that Jesus talks about here. He will guide you into all truth. Not some truth, but all truth. And notice what he says in verses 13 through 15. Jesus says, when the spirit of truth, he even gives him that name, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He'll not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he's heard. He will tell you about the future. He'll bring me glory by telling you whatever he received from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Now, think about this. He's the Spirit of truth. Why? Because he knows all about God because he is God, and he knows all about the Bible because he's the author of the Bible. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit moved on holy men, and he led them even to the words that they chose to write. This is a Holy Spirit book from beginning to end. He is the author of this book. And so who better to teach us the truth than the Holy Spirit? And so when we open our Bibles, I think that's a good thing to do. As you, when you sit down to, to read God's word, just take a moment to bow your head and pray, Holy Spirit, this is your book. And I want you to teach me the truth that you have for me today. Open my eyes to understand your word. Because it's his book. And he is the one who can teach us. Now, understand this. He's not going to just dump all the truth on you at one time. You couldn't handle that. It would just blow your mind. Have you ever had the experience where, and, and Kathy and I have talked about this quite a bit. When you read through the Bible, Kathy has the, the, the habit of reading the Bible every year. Uh, how many years now, Kathy? Okay, so over 40 years, every year, read the Bible through. Now, what Kathy and I have talked about is this. Every time I read through the Bible, and I go over a verse I've read 40 other times, or maybe more than that, guess what I see? Something I've never seen before. Now, why is that? It was there before. I had the opportunity to read it and know it. Why just now am I getting it? Because the Holy Spirit gives it the truth that I need for the day, for now, for the time that I'm living in. He has the way to illuminate my mind just when I need it. And that's why it's so important to read God's word because he has what you need for today. Before I came to church this morning, I happened to open my Bible to uh, Psalm 86 and God just spoke and ministered to my heart today just through that simple psalm. If you have a chance to read it, let God speak to your heart today. But Psalm 86, God really used that through the Holy Spirit. You know what? I've read through the Psalms again, I don't know how many times. And I've read Psalm 86, but I never saw it like I saw it this morning. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, and that's what he wants to do in your life. He is a, I, I'm not real good at the technical things or mathematical things or uh, scientific things, 
So when I talk about a transformer, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm kind of an idiot in this area, but um, I remember my uh, my little train set when I was a kid. You know, I used to like to get down, especially when if I I got one for Christmas one time, so I did. I just kind of lined the track around the tree, and that was kind of fun watching the train go around. And, and uh, but every train then, I don't know if they still have them, but they have a little. They call it a transformer, right? It's the little switch that you use to where the electricity comes into it, and then it shoots the electricity to the track, and the little train goes around. You know why that transformer's there? If the electricity went straight into the track, it would just melt it down. Couldn't handle it. But that transformer takes all that power and transforms it down into a, a, a voltage that that little train set can handle. The Holy Spirit is this amazing power. He is God. He is all powerful, almighty. And he lives in me. But he transforms <laughs> that power that God has for me down into a size that I can handle. Now, by the way, you can, as you walk in with the Lord, you should be growing in your ability to receive more of the power of God. Let the Holy Spirit do his work in your life. Let him transform you. The more you grow, the more you'll know. When you need it, he will teach you. And so let God do that. Let the Holy Spirit do his work. And guide you into all truth. But finally, and I think maybe the most important thing that he does, he points us to Jesus. In verse 14, it says, Jesus says, he will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. When I was in high school, uh, a lot of pastors were preaching about the Holy Spirit. The charismatic movement was just kind of taken off, and there was a lot of emphasis on the work of the Holy Spirit. And I think it was good to have been, in one sense, because the Holy Spirit had kind of been neglected, I think, for years. And so it was good. But I think that, like we as tend to do as human beings, we kind of went too far, and all the focus was the Holy Spirit. One of the things I think about the Holy Spirit is he doesn't want to be noticed. Because everything in it, what that he does is pointing you to Jesus. Everything. He'll never call attention to himself. Jesus says he will bring me glory by telling whatever he receives from me. He'll teach you to exalt Jesus in your life. He hates the limelight. But isn't that what should happen in our lives? Shouldn't we be like the Holy Spirit? I mean, who's going to get somebody to heaven, Steve or Jesus? That's almost a laughable question, isn't it? You know, there are seven billion people or how many ever now on this planet and if all of those people never know my name they have lost nothing but if they don't know the name of Jesus they have lost everything everything and as the Holy Spirit only points folks to Jesus that's my job too that's your job to point others to him he guides us to Jesus. By the way, we use this terminology, well, I accepted Christ. And that's great. Man, I pray that everybody in this room has. But that's not the real miracle. You know what the, mo the most amazing thing is? That God accepted us. That's the most amazing thing. Why wouldn't we accept him? with all that he does in our lives and all the blessings and things he bestowed, why wouldn't we think, well, why in the world would he accept me? I would not even know to call on his name if it were not for the Holy Spirit drawing me to Jesus. You would never have ever asked Jesus Christ in your heart if it were not for the Holy Spirit working in your life. When you hear people talking about God, you can know one thing for sure, the Holy Spirit is right there. They may be saying nonsense, but if they're talking about God, 
The Holy Spirit is trying to draw them to him. That's a good opportunity, too, also, folks, when you're around friends or somebody and they bring up the subject. It means the Holy Spirit's working in their lives. And that's a good time for you to let God use you to be light. He guides us to Jesus. Well, what does the Holy Spirit's ministry mean to us? Let's wrap it up this morning. When he convicts the world, the Holy Spirit wants to use you and me. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. Huh. I thought Jesus was the light of the world. But he says, you are the light of the world. Most people who don't know the Lord today are never going to pick up a Bible and they're never going to turn to John 3.16 and hear that God loves them. They're never going to read the accounts of Matthew and Mark and Luke and John that talk about how Jesus gave his life. They're never going to look at Ephesians chapter 2 and read about God's amazing grace. But you know what they are going to do? As you and I live for the Lord in our lives each day, the Holy Spirit is going to draw their attention to what it looks like to follow Jesus. You and I are light. Let's shine the light. We talk about church. This building convicts nobody of sin. This building does not witness to Jesus. The witness about him. If the world's going to be changed, it's going to be changed by God's people. Individuals who love the Lord enough to live it, live it out before the people around them. Second thing in teaching the word the Spirit wants to see change. He wants to see change in our lives. He's not going to change your circumstances most of the time. What the Holy Spirit is going to change is you and me. So let me ask you, any change happening in your life spiritually? Are you growing? And finally, I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. When, they talk, when the Bible talks about the power of the Holy Spirit, when it uses the word power in the Greek language, it uses the word dunamis. Now, that may not mean much to you, but dunamis you hear it, you can hear a little bit of the word dynamite in it. That's where we get our word dynamite from, is that word power. So the Holy Spirit is the dynamite of God. What does dynamite do? <laughs> they use dynamite in well-placed situations to change something, right? I mean, that's the whole point of dynamite. When it does its thing, whatever was it's around is changed. When God's power is in our lives, when the Holy Spirit is working in our lives, there is change. I don't have to change myself. I just have to focus on the Lord and the power, the dynamite of the Holy Spirit changes me. It makes me into a new person. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is a changed life. I've been pastoring for a long time and I've heard a lot of people Profess faith in, in Christ. And you know how you can tell whether it's real or not? What happens next? Is there any change? Is there any difference? Some people can come and pray a prayer and, and have this big moment and walk out the doors and nothing in their life changes. The reason being, there was no change in the heart. When the Holy Spirit comes in, there is change. You will not be the same person. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. That's what he does. Let's finish up this morning. Let's thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, for what he does. And I would challenge you this week, 
to pray every day. Lord, Holy Spirit, fill me, lead me, guide me. In your prayer time this week, take the time to open to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. And pray, and as you pray, mentally put on the armor of the Holy Spirit. But let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Let him change you. Let him empower you. Let him comfort you. Whatever your need is this week, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. Let's pray. Well, Father, we thank you for your wisdom. We need you in our lives. We need the work of Jesus every day in our lives. And so, Lord, you gave us yourself in the person of the Holy Spirit to come in the moment that we profess faith and trust Jesus as our Savior. You come and you fill our hearts. And you remind us of Jesus and everything he said. We learn about you and what you do and how much you love us. The Holy Spirit, Lord, I thank you that he helps us in our struggles, that he is the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our trials and our challenges with a, a comfort that we can't even begin to explain. Lord, help us to be able to not only accept that and receive that and enjoy that, but Father, help us to share that comfort that we've received from you. Help us to comfort each other. Help us to take it to a world that desperately needs someone to care. Someone who's not so wrapped up in hatred and anger. Someone who's able to look past all the, the nonsense that we put up and see the real issue, the heart. Help us as your people to be usable. Lord, that you can take our lives each day and make us a, a living testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit. that the people around us would know that there is a God and that he is good and that he can change a life because he changed me. So Lord, I pray we live in that power today and every day. Thank you for our time together. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.